Hello and welcome to Choose vs. Switch. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. This is another battle series video, and today we're gonna put the Choose and Switch functions in a head-to-head, -head, three round competition. Before we turn to Excel, let me know in the comments below, who do you think's better, Choose or Switch? Ladies and gentlemen, to my left wearing red trunks, Choose! And the competitor, the new kid on the block, Switch! Let's get ready to rumble! Round one. The purpose of both of these functions is to look at a value, for example, the years, and then to do different math depending on that value. For example, if that value happens to be a one, we wanna do this math. If the number of years is a two, we wanna do some different math. If the number of years is a three, we wanna do some different math. In a way, it's kind of like a lookup function, like VLOOKUP or XLOOKUP, but instead of looking up a related value and returning that value, we're actually doing different math. It's a different expression. So let's just kinda of see how this unfolds. First with choose, equals choose. All right, the first argument is called index num. This is a cell that contains the values one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And it has to be an index number that starts at one and increments by one. And fortunately for us, we have years one, two, three. So we point it here and then comma. So then the remaining arguments are value one, value two, value three. So in other words, if index num is a one, what do we want to return? Well, if index number is a one, we want to return a flat 500, comma. Next is the value two argument. If the number of years is a two, what's the math? Well, the math is sales times 0.03, comma. Next is the value three argument. The math is margin times 10%, close function, and enter. So for all the years one, we should get 500, one 500, one 500, that looks good. For all twos, we should get sales times three, so here sales is 31,000 times 3% should be somewhere around 1,000, that looks good. And this is a two, so I'm assuming that's right. And then three is margin times 10%, so three is margin times 10%, that looks good, and that looks good. Now let's do the same thing with switch. Equals switch. Okay, so just like with the choose function, we point it to the years column, comma. Now this is where things get a little different. With switch, we get pairs of arguments. So we define the value and then the result. So here the value is one, and if the value is one, what is the result? We wanna return a flat 500. If it's two, we wanna return sales times 0.03. And if the value is three, we wanna return margin times 0.1, and we hit enter. And now let's fill this down and we're getting the same results as the choose function. So in practice, which one would I go with? In practice, I may possibly go with choose just because it's a little cleaner, there's less arguments. Um, and then in future periods, if I were to add more years, it's pretty easy just to tack on some additional expressions. Round two. This time, instead of having the number of years, we have some text values. This is represented with some regions. So let's try it with choose. Equals choose. All right, so what's the index num? Hmm. There really is no index num, right? For now, let's point it to the region and then comma. Now, if the region is the first one, what's the math? Well, the math is gonna be margin times 0.04, comma. If it's mid, then it's gonna be sales times 3%. So sales times 0.03, comma. And if it's the next one down, it's gonna be east, which is margin times 0.05, margin 0.05, close function. And I don't expect this to work because this index num argument is not referencing an integer value of one, two, or three. So we hit enter and as expected, we get an error. So then it's like, okay, well, if I really, really wanted to use the choose function, is there some way to convert C13 into an integer number like one, two, or three. Sure, there's always ways to get helper functions. Um, one option would be to have a, a lookup table where we look up west and it returns one or mid returns two or, or whatnot, um, or x lookup. Uh, we could also use the match function and we could say, go ahead and match the value in C13 comma 
in this range and zero for exact match. And the purpose of the match function is to find the position number of west in this list. So if west is one, then it will return one and it'll return this value. If it's the second one in the list, it would return the second value. If it's a third one in the list, it'll return this third value. But there's a problem with this. These value arguments have to be in order of one, two, three, and so on. So this works because west happens to be the first one. And the formula for that is the first one. Mid is the second, and this is the formula for mid. So Jeff, that's not a problem. Really? Well, what if someone just says, well, you know what? I'd like to sort this in ascending order by region. That's no big deal. Excel updates everything when we do a sort, so it's like, it's totally fine. Okay. Before we do sort, let's take a look at this value, 1812. Now let's do a sort, A to Z. Okay, and as you can see, that simple sort completely broke my choose function. Why? Because West is no longer number one. West is three, but the expression for West is still in the value one position. And that's why things break, okay? So let me go ahead and undo. And now let's try this with switch, equals switch. Once again, we're gonna point it here, comma, and then we have these pairs of arguments. So if it is west, then the math is gonna be margin times 0.04, comma. If it is mid, then our expression is sales times 0.03. And if it is east, then it is margin times 0.05, Close the function and enter. Now let's see if it's susceptible to that whole sort thing. As you can expect, it's not gonna be a problem. Let's just prove it out. Let's go ahead and do another sort, A to Z, and the switch function does not break, okay? In other words, the choose function relies on the exact order of these arguments. So if you change the order somewhere else, this formula is gonna to need to be updated because otherwise it's gonna return unexpected or potentially incorrect results. Whereas with the switch function, we define the values so it wouldn't matter where in the list these are, it's gonna find it. In other words, order doesn't matter. Cool? All right, so who won round two? I'm going with switch. Round three, let's go ahead and try this with choose. Equals choose. All right, this is my index num. I know that's not an integer value of one, two, three, but for now, let's just go ahead and finish out the formula. If it's a one, what do we wanna return? We wanna return the margin times 0.04. If it's a two, we want it to return the margin times 0.05. If it is a three, we want it to return sales times 0.03. In the interest of time, let me just close this function down and hit enter. Now we get an error. And we know why, it's because this is a W and not a one. We could wrap the match function around it, but I just wanna to get to the main point of this round. If I hit a one here, I get 18, 12, that's fine. If I enter two, I get 22, 65, that's fine. If I enter three, I get three, one, two. Now, what if I enter four? I get an error, and why is that? It's because I've only defined the value one, value two, and value three arguments. I did not define value four, five, or six. In other words, choose is saying, I don't see this in my list, therefore I'm gonna give you an error, okay? Now, how does the switch function deal with that? With a switch function, we actually have an argument that we can use that says, if none of these values are found, go with this default value. So it makes it kind of nice. So let me put this back to west. We know we're gonna have an error, that's fine. Equals switch. All right, here's our expression. All right, if it's equal to W, we wanna go with margin times 0.04. If it is M, we wanna go with margin times 0.05. If it is East, we wanna go with sales times 0.03. And we could continue to define each of these, S, S, E, and so on. And let me go ahead and fill this down. Now you're gonna see here, we've defined W, so it got the value. We defined M, it got the value. We defined E, it got the value. Here, we did not define S. So here, once again, it's saying, I could not find a value S, so I'm gonna give you an error, which is fine. But if I define a result without a corresponding value, it's gonna basically be the default. In other words, if I don't find any of the other ones in the list, I'm just gonna return this. So we can say, go with sales times 0.03. Before I enter, let's review. I'm asking the switch function to look at my region. If it's W, return this. 
If it's M, return this. Otherwise, return sales times 0.03. Enter. And now let's see what happens as we fill this down. Okay, now it's working. So in other words, the switch function defines a very convenient way to say if there's an error, in other words, if none of the values can be found, just go with this default value. All right, so in practice, let me know in the comments below, which one are you more likely to use in your workbooks, choose or switch? Hey, Excel user, if you ever need to create summary reports, check out my pivot table for beginners video. It starts at the beginning and shows how to store the data transactions in a table and then how to summarize those transactions with a pivot table report. I hope it helps unlock the incredible power of pivot tables. I don't do these battle videos in order to declare a winner I do them to really highlight their differences because I feel like that when you have the knowledge of their differences, you're better informed and you're better equipped to use the right one for the right workbook in the stuff that you're working on. Thanks so much for joining me. Have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 